Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about VideoScribe. I'm going to give you a really, really quick tutorial as well as give you my review, the things that I love about it and the things that they probably could use a little tweaking on. Okay guys, I'm so excited to make this video for you. The last video I did on video editing, I talked about Go Animate and how neat and user-friendly the platform and the interface is and the learning curve. Awesome, awesome, simple learning curve. This video, I'm going to talk to you about VideoScribe. Now on the surface, it looks like they're the same creature, right? It looks like Go Animate is very close to VideoScribe when in actuality, it is not at all true. VideoScribe is a completely unique and different software system. Now given Go Animate does give you the whiteboard option, however, I I believe VideoScribe is a much more robust software system when it comes to the drawing feature of the animation itself. So if you have seen those hand drawings of pictures in detail, VideoScribe will give you a much more detailed rendition as far as the artistry is concerned. So I want to say I believe that is like the big is different. The platform is different, you know, the canvas and there are some different uh, things that are available in VideoScribe that is not similar to Go Animate. However, the biggest difference that I have seen is the fact that VideoScribe is much more robust when it comes to the whiteboard portion of the animation. I'm going to go through all of that in my uh, tutorial and the review. But to start out, how do you get started with VideoScribe? I think they offer something so neat. They offer you a seven day free trial that is totally free to you to test out and try before you decide whether or not you want to purchase the uh, entire usage license that's available through VideoScribe. There's no difference that I can see between the free trial version versus the full version itself. So I love that, that VideoScribe is pretty much standing on their belief that, hey man, we're giving you guys some uh, an awesome software and it speaks for itself. Give it a try, see if you like it. And from there you can pay if you want. So with that said, let's take a look at the pricing. The pricing, I think, is pretty reasonable. It's $16.50 a month, or you can pay for the entire year at $198. They give you a little bit of a discount if you do that. If you prefer not to go for the entire year for that $16.50 discount, then you can pay by the month. It's $29 a month or a one-time $6.65, which I love. Now, I know if you don't have a big budget that you're working from, you're going $6.65, what? But I promise you that is awesome that they're even giving you a one-off payment. A lot of software systems out there now, like the Adobe Suite, you know, it, they're they're not offering you the ability to purchase it anymore. You actually are moving on to a monthly subscription platform, just like GoAnimate. They have a monthly subscription platform. And if you looked into any of the other animation software and the uh, presentation softwares that are out there, many of them are on a monthly uh, licensing agreement. So I love the fact that go at uh, that uh, VideoScribe is giving you the option to give you a one-off payment. So VideoScribe, don't ever take that away. That is so awesome. Below this video, scroll on down into the description section. You'll see a link where you can actually get right to the VideoScribe platform and subscribe for the seven-day free trial. And if you choose to make a purchase, then I would so appreciate it if you make a purchase through that link. What that will do is it will give me credit to apply towards my monthly usage. Now I know 16 bucks isn't a lot to spend every single month, but for those of you who follow my channel, I'm all about helping you guys find ways to make your life easier and find ways to save money, right? I'm a big, big advocate of everybody being a good steward of our money and to not be wasteful in life. So and I encourage you guys to always work with that mindset. If you're doing something for fun, then cool, have it be fun. But if you can save money while you're doing it, that's even better. Anyways, so that's pretty much the sign up process for VideoScribe. Once you sign in to VideoScribe, the, you will have a uber, uber amount of help. These guys are awesome. So you can 
definitely send them an instant message and they will answer any questions you have. The thing that I really love though is they have this thing called the Video Scribe community that has so much information on it. So whatever it is you're working on, if you have a question on something or if you need some ideas, this is the place you need to go. And don't be afraid. If this is something new to you and you're an artist or you just like doing creative things but it's kind of nervous, you're kind of nervous about it, you're like, oh, I'm not too sure if I can do it. They have some great tutorial videos that you can look through that is so much fun and very informative to help you get going. Now, if you're a professional and if you're a business looking at my video right now and you're trying to decide for yourself, should I use VideoScribe for my marketing videos or for my training videos? The answer to that is a yes. To you absolutely should. It's a wonderful program that you can use if you're looking for that robust animation feature that is available through VideoScribe and if you have a little time for some uh, preparation as far as the learning curve is concerned there is definitely a little bit of a learning curve uh, associated to this and it is a little bit of as far as time consuming is concerned to piece everything together, I'll show you guys in just a little bit. So why in the world should you ever use a professional to create a video for you? Well, big answer to that is time. So if you're a business looking into this and you're trying to decide, well, do you want to do it yourself or do you want to hire a professional? The answer to that question is all totally dependent on whether or not you have a budget. If you have a budget, then I say pay the professional because in the long run, you will totally save on the time and the headache and the learning curve, right? If this is not something that is enjoyable for you and you don't want to learn a new skill, then hire it out. But if you're like me, uh, in my last video on Go Animate, I said that I'm totally a nerd when it comes to stuff like this because I just love it. I love learning new things. I love mastering new skills and I uh, would like to consider myself an artsy creative kind of personality so I just totally enjoy doing this so if you have time and you want to learn then yes do it yourself but if you don't have time then I would strongly encourage you to hire it out because by the time you're done paying someone to do it versus putting the time in yourself it's uh, <laughs> it's um, it's mm, I don't want to say not worth it, but if it's not something that you enjoy, you might spend more of your time hitting your head against the keyboard than uh, getting productive work done at and out. I hope that makes sense. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into VideoScribe. Once you have logged into VideoScribe, your screen is not going to look like this. It's actually going to be these two main buttons that are going to be available to you. This is for you to start a new project and this is for you to go into your uh, desktop, if you will, in the cloud. So you have the ability to save your scribes either on your desktop itself or to save your scribes in the cloud. And I love the fact that as of yet, they have not, they're not charging you for that service. So I would encourage you guys to save it in both places. Save it, your scribe on your desktop as well as in the cloud. It's always good to have a backup plan, right? So when you start on a new scribe, you just go on in here and click on that button right there and it will bring you into a brand new canvas for you to start a brand new scribe. Okay, once you're in, the system itself is really nice and clean and totally self-explanatory. This button obviously is for you to save, right? And you can save your scribe as often as possible. The system itself does have an automatic save for you, but it's not, uh, I don't think it's um, very time sensitive. So I'm going to say better safe than sorry, save often. Okay, save, save, save your software because sometimes I have been kicked out before because of stuff running on my computer or my computer being weird or whatever my laptop being weird and then I'll get kicked out and then when I log back in there is a saved version but it is not down to the second of my last work I hope that makes sense so I would encourage you to save and save often this button here is for you to put an image into your canvas we'll go through the details of that in just a little bit this button is for you to add in text this is for you to add in charts and bar graphs and all those neat things they video scribe has wonderful tr soundtracks as well as sound effects already in their uh, library for you to use totally free to you there are, that you can use free of charge as well as it gives you the licensing ability to use on a commercial scale without having to worry about paying for it and you can add in your voiceover as well in an mp3 format 
I love the fact that you can change the texture of your scribe. So that's really neat. You can keep it as, as the plain old white, right? The plain old white background of the whiteboard, or you can change the paper, if you will. Now, if you don't like changing the paper and you want something that is uh, more detailed, you can go online and import in a picture and use that picture as your canvas. So I'll give you an example of what that would look like. One of my favorite places to find pictures, guys, is Pixel Bay. And I love Pixel Bay simply because they give you a lot of free pictures that are public domain that gives you the ability to change as you like and you don't have to worry about infringing on anyone else's creative rights. So love it, love it, love it. Go to Pixel Bay. Pixel Bay also gives you the option to change all of the different sizes or download the different sizes that's available to you. Actually, let me just go ahead and take you there. Here we go. Pixel Bay. So you can go into Pixel Bay and search whatever picture you're looking for. Okay, and I like the fact that they give you really professional looking sponsored links. So these guys up here are sponsored links. So if you click on those, they're going to want you to pay. But down here, these, most of them are free to you. And I really like the fact that you can ch pick the picture in question. And then you can download the size, any size that you would like that's available to you. These are the different sizes that are available to you. You can go as big as you want to or as little as you want to. I normally like to stay in the medium size range for video scribe simply because it's a great way for you to keep your file size as small as possible, but the pixelation and the picture quality is nice right at the medium size. If you go any bigger than that, unless you're making a couple second video or maybe a minute video, you should be fine. But if you're doing more than say five minutes, if you put down a lot of pictures, guys, that is going to make your file size ginormous, which will in turn make your rendering time forever. I went through a rendering, I want to say of a 20 minute video that took like a day and a half. That it was insane. So <laughs> one way for you to keep your file size down is to just make sure you put down, put in small picture sizes, right? So you just click on that, click on the download, make sure that the license says domain, public domain or free licensing to use and you are golden. Now the thing that I really like about Pixel Bay is this feature right here, guys. You guys, you can sort by vector graphics. Whoa. Okay. If you're not uh, familiar with what that mean. Video Scribe gives you the ability to import in JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs or GIFs. Those are all usable in Video Scribe. However, if you want that really pretty crisp, clean drawing effect, then you want a vector graphic file or, or an SVG. Those SVGs are broken down into the drawing elements and that is what gives it a really smooth, beautiful rendition when it comes uh, comes time for you to send that into an animation process. So I hope that makes sense. So my favorite place to find pictures, Pixel Bay. Um, if you're looking for some neat ideas, I got a great trick for you guys. I always go into Google, right? And you search out whatever picture it is that you're looking for. So you can search by image, right? And then under here where it says more, you actually, I apologize, under search tools is where you can change and filter it into the usage right. Something you might notice is when you search for the ability to reuse um, you're going to see that your available pictures go down dr dramatically. So what I've actually been doing instead is not giving it a filter at all, searching for the pictures that I like, and then kind of getting an idea as to what the picture looks like. And then I go back into Pixel Bay and I give the description under the search engine and find a picture that is similar to what I saw outside of Pixel Bay that I really like and hopefully finding something similar to it in a free usage license. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was helpful to you guys. Okay, so I've already downloaded all of the files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import it now from 
my desktop. So once you have in the import, you guys will see this is how the it goes in automatically as is. These buttons down here gives you the ability to zoom in or zoom out. So essentially you might originally think, well, I'll just zoom in to where I want it and then I'll set the camera angle. And this button here is where you would set the camera angle. But before we do that, guys, I would advise you not to do a zooming in and zooming out. I learned the hard way that you do not want to do that. When you zoom in and zoom out, can you see how this picture now is at 214% zoom in or 236? Every time you zoom in, it makes the software itself get stressed out and it will lag your system. You do not want to do that. Instead, a better way to work through your video scribe is to keep your canvas at a 100% rate at any given point in time and instead of zooming in what you want to do instead is to just make the picture bigger. That will not stress out your system as much as if you were to do the zooming in and zooming out and I hope that makes sense. So once you've got your picture large enough, you set it wherever you want your canvas to be, and then you click on this button here where it, it will set your camera position. So whenever your camera comes into frame, it will show up exactly as you see on this canvas point. This button here is going to give you the ability to really man whittle down on how you want the animation to come in and I love that about video about video scribe because they give you the option to really be in control of what it is you're doing since we're using this as an actual canvas itself we don't want it to come in or out right so we're going to change the animation value to zero we're going to change the pause to zero and we're going to change the transition time to zero Trans the pausing is really um, what the camera position is going to do so let's say what's the animation the animation you can say I want it to take five seconds to animate this picture that's what the animation is the pausing is saying what well, I want once the animation is done I want the camera to pause on this still picture for two or three seconds whatever your pause time is and then the transition is I want you to transition from this picture to the next picture a second or two now it may not it may seem confusing now because you guys don't see what it is I'm talking about but when you go into the system and you're trying to move the transition point to go along with say a voiceover this right here you guys is invaluable to guaranteeing how professional your presentation is going to look down to the point second of the transition. Is that not cool or what? Okay, down here, this right here gives you the chance to replace this image. So let's say you put this picture in and you decide to yourself, oh, I don't want a blackboard, I want a green board. Or I don't want the blackboard, I want a picture of a uh, cloth canvas. So you can just click on this button here. It'll take you back out to the searching menu for you to import in another picture. This button allows you to change the filter. Uh, it's not relevant to a picture, but in a little bit when we do text, you can go in here and change whether or not this the text is going to have a shadow, how big of the shadow is it going to have, and what the color of the shadowing is going to be. It's really neat. We'll go through that in a little bit. This here is important in this example, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. This is where you're going to uh, give it what hand you want the presentation to show. In the original, we didn't go this far, but this hand right here is where you're going to set the hand for your entire presentation, or you can go into the actual element itself and change the hand. So I'm just going to go ahead in this situation. I don't want a hand to show up, so I'm going to click no hand, click yes, and yes again and get out of the whole thing and this is what the scene is going to start out with now that we're ready to add on the next element we're just going to click on the button and we're going to go ahead and pick another element so something neat about go about video scribe is the fact that you can put in your own picture or they have an entire library of elements that you can put in so you can type in the keyword for the element that in question that you're looking for and the system will search the database for you. VideoScribe gives you a lot of, of pictures that you can use totally free to you and they also have pictures that you can purchase which is nice also so you know 
So if you're looking for something even more special than what's available to you, you can see that they uh, give you other options. And of course, you know, the little stinkers, the prettier pictures cost you money, right? Which they've got to make a living. So I can't blame them on that one. We all want to make a living, right? So the prettier light bulb is going to cost you $3.70 if that's what you want to do. If not, you can go back and use one of their free light bulbs. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of their free light bulbs. I'm going to click on that and the light bulb comes on. Now, see, the light bulb is going to be drawn out in black and that's not what I want because it's a black background, right? So I'm going to go into the properties, the elements property. And over here where it says full color, I'm going to change that to an outline and change the outline color to whatever color you want. In this example, I'm going to choose white. I'm going to click yes. I think the three minutes, three seconds is perfectly fine. I'm going to click yes. And now you have your element there and you can preview it and see what that's going to look like. Isn't that neat? Love it. You guys might have noticed. Did you guys see how it's panned out at the end? We're going to go ahead and click play again. And you'll see right here where it says zoom at the end. Unclick that if that's not what you want to create for yourself. And so once you have that unclicked, then you'll now see that once you're done with the animation or the white bar drawing, it doesn't go anywhere. So I really like that feature that you can control that. Why would you want to pan out? Well, you guys have seen whiteboard presentations before where it looks like there's a, a storyline that starts from here and then it goes over here and then it goes over there. And then by the time the whole storyline wiggles around and it's done, you want to show the big picture. That's what you want to do. Something you might notice also about this canvas is because it is just one picture. If you want to use this as a canvas again, so let's say for example, I'm going to pan out into the next scene, right? You need to pan out to the next scene so you can go either go down. If that's how you want your scribe to look, you can have it go down or you can have it go across or you can have it go uh, moving up for you. However you want to do that, you want to decide ahead of time, right? So you, cause you don't want to look <laughs> schizophrenic there. It should be, it, it's a lot of fun to use creative licensing in your scribes. But one advice I can give you on this is make sure that you give yourself a direction. Uh, the direction is a, a great way to keep your audience engaged. There is something about the human brain. We really do have a small attention span. That's why one of these, uh, these video scribes are just so wonderful for presentations and education. However, uh, our brain also likes order. So a great way that you can give your audience order is to decide ahead of time how you want your elements to be panned from scene to scene. So you guys might notice that this element, the next scene that we're going to go to is going to have a dark, it's not not going to have that dark background, right? It's going to have that white background. The next thing I want to show you is just um, what to do when you want to just use the plain old white background and adding in a item that is more detailed than this light bulb, right? So I picked a really neat picture online that I found that originally was actually a JPEG that I turned into an SVG. Now, why? what does that mean? What does that even mean? So I'm going to go ahead and pick my element. This is the element that I found and I was able to change this JPEG into an SVG file. Now guys, JPEGs and SVGs are completely different, right? We talked about that. We talked about how the JPEGs or the PNGs are really just one picture as opposed to a full uh, broken down aspect of that picture in the SVGs. So I'll give you an example of what it's going to look like, the difference between an SVG and a JPEG. This is the JPEG here. And you can probably already see <laughs> the difference between the two. With a, J, with a JPEG, what's going to happen is when you put it in, it's not going to render in its tiny little elements. It's actually going to show itself just like that. It's going to show it like a sweeping effect as opposed to the broken down aspects of being drawn down. You guys see those that different feature? Now you can actually put in a JPEG into VideoScribe and what VideoScribe is going to do is they're going to try to break your picture down for you if you want them to. However, you'll notice that when we do that, 
I'll give you an example. Let's turn. Let's put in that JPEG again, and I'm going to put it in from scratch from my desktop. This add an image window menu is awesome because it gives you the ability to go search online directly if you want to, or you can go into the SVG Studio. The SVG Studio is Video Scribe's version of the paid option of all of the pictures they have in a huge collection of different artists that are available to you. So if you want to check that out, if you want something that doesn't look like this, but you still want a cartoon with a completely different feel to it, you should go to that SVG studio and you can find all of the different kinds of pictures that are available to you. It's really neat. Or you can go online and search it yourself and download. I personally like to go search first, save it onto my computer and then import it off of my desktop and the reasoning behind that is it doesn't stress the system because you don't want your software to take forever to find what it is you're looking for because it may seem like no big deal however this is such a robust system and it is totally doing a lot of work and you don't want it to um, be bogged down. So on my desktop, you can see I have an SVG version of this clock picture and I have a JPEG version. Now when I download or import in the desktop, the JPEG version, what VideoScribe is going to do is during this downloading process or this importing process, it's going to try to figure out what kind of picture is this and it's going to give you different options on how to import it into the software itself. So you see how here VideoScribe tried to break it down for you. So um, you can choose these breakdowns, but the breakdowns are not that great. So depending on the breakdown that you put into the system, it's going to look okay, but the hand is going to come out and draw it just like this. It's not going to be as detailed as you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one here and give you guys an example of what it's going to look like. You see that? So when you hit play, to see what it's going to look like. It's going to come out looking like that. And that is not pretty <laughs> at all. So how can you get the look of this element here? How can you get it to look so pretty and clean and crisp like that without having to pay an arm and a leg for it, right? <laughs> how do you do that? Well, first and foremost, you've got to find a picture that is uh, of a public domain picture that allows you to change it and to use it free of charge, right? And then from there, you need to convert it into an SVG file. How in the world do you do that? If you're not familiar and you don't have the Adobe suite and you want something that's free, right? I'm all about giving you guys options to save money and do things for free. So a great software that you can look up is called Inkscape. It's a totally free platform that you can use. Just Google Inkscape and then there are awesome YouTube videos online that will show you how to do a picture tracing or a bitmap tracing of the picture itself you save the trace portion of the picture that you import into Inkscape as an SVG file and you end up with a wonderful rendition opportunity. <laughs> so I love that. I hope that makes sense. And if you guys are interested in me putting together a video as to how I turned this clock from a JPEG into an SVG, just go ahead and scroll down to the comment section below and put in the comments that that is something that is of interest to you that you'd like to see me do and I'll be happy to do that for you. Otherwise, just go ahead and search YouTube for how to turn, uh, how to use Inkscape to turn a picture, a JPEG or PNG into an SVG. So I hope that makes sense. So that's where you can put in a picture. Isn't that awesome? There's diff lots of different pictures that you can choose. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and click on the elements that I don't want and just take them out. So you can double click on it if you're on a Mac and delete it from there. Or you can use this little these buttons down there to take it out. So you guys might notice I have not given an am camera angle. So every time I double click on it, it just takes me to the middle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this over here because that's where I want it to appear on my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a camera angle. And that's where it's going to be. I'm also going to change the element from 30 seconds of the animation down to, say, 10 just for to make this video a little bit shorter for you guys so you can see the end product. 
the hand oh I forgot to mention to you guys the hand is really neat I love the fact that you can actually change your hands so you can change it from uh, male or female to nation different nationalities to ages as well so you can have young young hand or more mature hand and you can also change the pins the elements of the pins if you want the pin or a crayon or a brush script or or however it is the the options are just vast so I'm gonna let you guys look through that on your own and if you don't want a hand you can use a zipper or you can use a um, what is this this is a sewing machine <laughs> and you can also use just the pins by themselves if you prefer as well okay so at this point what you can do if you're wanting to add in text this button gives you the ability to add in text now I love the fact that video scribe does give you a lot of flexibility on this aspect in and of itself there are other software systems that do not give you the ability to upload your own font and I love the fact that video scribe will let you do that so this button here will allow you the ability to go in and import in your own fonts that you can find on either Google fonts or any fonts that you've created yourself if you're a super cre creative person that created their own font you can actually put your own font in there how neat is that you can change the color of the font today I'm going to go ahead and use the fonts that I already have in the system and put in my text At this point, we're going to go over real quick how you can give this text some drop shadowing. This is the option there. Just click on that button and it will give you the ability to add on a drop shadow onto your text and you can change the color as well if you would like. not showing up very well so you can manipulate this and change the angle make it bigger make it smaller or you can even add on a glow effect so I'm gonna let you guys play uh, you can play around in this and completely change the system as much or as little as you would like At this point, if you're wanting to set the camera angle for multiple elements, you can totally do that by selecting all the elements that you want to have in play. Click the set camera angle and you are golden, ready to rock and roll there. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out since we don't need it anymore for the example. Okay, so let's take a look. This big play button here will play the entire thing in full screen for you, or you can click this play button down here and it just plays in this screen level. So I'm going to click this up here so you guys can see what that looks like. pretty neat now let's say you don't want the hand there we can go in and remove the hand right 
So something else I've noticed that's been really helpful to me is if you're starting a project and you know that within that project that the majority of the project is something you want that does not have the camera, the, the hand at play, you can click on this button here. And this is the one that gives the universal settings for the entire project as opposed to just the element. At this point, let's add on some sound effects, shall we? You can add on sound effects specifically to each element, or you can put in the music for the entire project. You can change the volume down here, and you can turn this music onto a loop for it to play for the entire thing as well, if you would prefer. Neat, right? It's a lot of fun. The opportunities are endless. You can do so much. And I know many of you guys out there are so creative. And I think that's probably one, one of the reasons why these platforms are just so popular right now. It gives everyday normal people the ability to use and flex their creative muscle to have t a lot of fun with it. You'll notice here is a button for you to also add in a voiceover. And you can record your voiceover directly from the, go the video video scribe platform or you can upload it in mp3 file from your desktop or from a cloud-based source so it's really neat there's just so many things that you can do for this product now we talked about how you can open up video scribe i talked to you a little bit about the voiceover we talked about music and sound effect i talked to you about how to import in pictures and what the differences are and what video scribe would do for a jpeg png versus a GIF, and I didn't even talk to you guys about the GIFs, but when you import in your picture here, you can browse through all of the different GIFs or GIFs that VideoScribe has available for you, and those are just moving arts. So let's see. So as far as the moving GIFs are concerned, you can give it an option to play continuously for the entire scene, or you can give it a time, right? So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and have it play continuously. And now here's an example of how you could change the vantage point. Now, even though Carpe Diem was part of the original bigger scene, we can make it and turn it into part of this smaller scene. So at this point, you will leave your Carpe Diem uh, camera setting alone and just change this, the uh, wheels camera setting here. And so now we'll go ahead and play it from here so you can see the transition. Isn't that neat? Love, love, love. Okay, so whenever you guys are done, we've talked about the font, how to put in your font. We talked about saving. So let's go ahead and talk about saving on either the desktop or the cloud. So you're gonna click this button. And if you click here, then you're gonna be saving your scribe into your desktop. If you click this button here, you're going to be exporting and saving it into the Sparkle Cloud. And Sparkle is the company that created VideoScribe. Or you can click here to just take a snapshot of a PDF document for this, this scribe that you're creating. So I'm going to just save it into my desktop for now since this is just an example video. Okay, so there's the saving. Let's talk about exporting. This button here is where you're going to be able to render or export your 
wonderful scribe. You can export it into a video file that you save. I would encourage you to do that. However, if you prefer, if you're doing something fun, it's not a big deal to you, you want to send it right to your YouTube channel, you can totally do that. You can send it right to your Facebook wall, you can do that as well. And look at how neat, you can actually turn this into a PowerPoint presentation. So the opportunities for you to be creative really is unlimited in this software system. So neat. In this example, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like when you actually click the save as a movie. You can change the format from a QuickTime movie to, to a screen FLV or an image sequence in PNG or in JPEG format. Or you can send it even as a window WMV. How cool is that? I normally like that QuickTime movie. Under the QuickTime movie, look at the sizing. How awesome. You can make the size as small or as large as you need it to be, all the way up to the 1080 full HD. And I love, 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 love the fact that you can change the frame rate on your rendering. So very, very neat system. Okay, whenever you're ready to rock and roll, you just click that button right there and it'll start to render your file for you and, and it will send it to wherever you designate that file should go to. I love it. Since this is an example, we're not going to do that. So guys, this is pretty much video scribe tutorial in a nutshell. It's really very simple. The thing that's time consuming about it is the different elements, right? Finding your pieces of the pictures, putting the pieces of the pictures together, moving from screen to screen. There are some elements of it that is just really neat. I understand why they have the platform the way it is. I believe because of the controllability of it. I truly believe that VideoScribe is a robust system that is available for professionals who are seriously putting together a, a big whiteboard detail presentation. So I love the fact that it is very, very detailed. It gives you a lot of control. However, it is slow. So when you are working, we're, we're only working on a couple second presentation here, but when you get into the hour long presentation, it will log bog down your system if you're not working with a super powerful computer. So I strongly encourage you to make sure that you do not use lots of big pictures. And also the rendering aspect of it. Once you get into the process, the aspect of rendering out a video that is an hour long or a presentation that's an hour long, it could take a little time. So that's what I meant when I say if you're a business and you're looking for a way to put together a scribe for your company, depending on what it is that you're doing, if you're doing a couple seconds, you possibly could have a fun learning curve. But if you're doing uh, an hour or half an hour long training video, this is probably an opportunity where you probably should go ahead and hire out some help. But I just love the fact that it is really neat. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful system that you can work out. And I love the fact that everything is just so very detailed for you. So neat, neat software system. So we went through it all, guys. Hopefully this was absolutely helpful to you. Please do make sure you hit the like and share button if it was. If you have any questions or requests for me on this software system or any other software animation system, please put it into your the comments below. And if you have questions on how to find pictures and save pictures and manipulate pictures, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out if I am able to. If not, I will point you in the right direction, I promise. And guys, don't be afraid of being able to do this. This is something that you can totally do. It's super simple. It's fun to learn. And it just takes a little time to go through the learning curve. So I hope this was helpful for you. And don't be afraid to try anything new. You can totally do it. Pray for faith. You can do it. Mm -hmm.